Hello and welcome to another episode of Disney Movie Investigation. If this is your first time watching, welcome to the show. In each episode, we take a look at a movie that is featured on Disney+. Plus. On this episode, the theme is lovable dogs as we take a look at the 1987 Disney film Benji the Hunted. And stay tuned for a bonus story as we take a look at another Disney character profile as we take a look at Pluto. And if you are enjoying these videos, I do ask that you please hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified with each new video. But for now, sit back and enjoy this episode of Disney Movie Investigation. So like I said, today we're covering Benji the Hunted. Uh, this movie was released on June 5th, 1987, and it was written and directed by Joe Kim. The production companies were Walt Disney Pictures, Mulberry Square Productions, and Screen Partners 3. It was distributed by Buena Vista Distribution, and the box office return was $22.3 million. Uh, so there is no real production history with this one. It's pretty simple uh, nature film uh, using animals to tell a story. Um, in terms of the cast, it's really small. So we have Benjamin, who is the dog Benji. Uh, Frank N. plays himself, and then Red Stiegel plays the hunter. Uh, in terms of the plot, uh, the show ben the show dog Benji is lost at sea and winds up in the wilderness of Oregon to fend for himself. Benji's one and only plan is to get back into his master's arms as soon as possible until he finds four orphan cougar kittens whose mother was shot by a hunter. Now his ultimate task is to take care of the four orphan kittens into the care of another mother cougar with her single child while avoiding the threatening animals of the wild. Um, so again, not even a lot of trivia on this one. It is pretty simple as it gets. Um, in terms of recommending this movie, um, I can totally appreciate what the movie was trying to do. Uh, this is number five in the Benji series. Um, the animal interactions make you appreciate the different animals as well as the beautiful scenery that the, that the movie was shot in. Uh, the problem really with this movie lies within the story as it, it starts off with this hugely emotional scene about Benji being lost at sea. But unless you've seen the previous five Benji movies, it, this really it gets lost. And it's like, why am I supposed to care? Like, obviously you care about the dog. Uh, but like, why are you supposed to be like breaking down and crying about this dog lost at sea? Um, there's no real emotional connection to Benji uh, for first time viewers. And this emotional reaction scene is not really earned. Um, you don't even get to see the way that Benji uh, is lost at sea. Uh, you basically just get to told about it by a news reporter. Um, so the other problem with the story is that, um, well, there's two other problems. The second problem is the music is way over the top for what it, it is. Um, you're having this emotional heart throb or harmonica type music throughout the entire movie. And it's like making you think that you're supposed to be crying about the cuteness of the dog, but it's just not there. Um, and then the other problem is the story is very repetitive. Uh, many times as Benji is interacting with the same animals over and over again. Like I think there's four different scenes where he's interacting with this wolf that's supposed to be harming Benji and it just, it's repetitive. Um, I think for what Disney would be better at these type Disney would get better at these movies when they release the Disney nature films. Um, I think they're a lot better. They have a more concrete story and um, it just the production values are a lot better. Um, so they, um, the Disney nature movies tend to explore the animals without, like I said, being that repetitive, as well as they tell a story that's more natural. This one seems really forced. Uh, so overall, I w wouldn't even recommend this movie. I would stick, it, stick to the Disney nature movies because um, I think they're a lot better done. Uh, so on to a positive note, uh, let's take a look at our bonus story as we take a look at Pluto. Uh, so Pluto is a medium-sized short-haired dog with black ears. And unlike other Disney characters, Pluto is not anthropomorphic and is officially Mickey Mouse's pet, uh, pet dog. Uh, Pluto appeared in 24 Mickey Mouse cartoons before getting his own series in 1937. Altogether, Pluto has appeared in 89 films between 1930 and 1953. Uh, several of these Pluto cartoons were Academy Award nominated films, including The Pointer in 1939, Squatter's Rights in 1946, and along with Mickey in Mickey and the Seal in 1948. The film Lend a Paw in 1941 would actually go on to win the Academy Award for Best Shorts. 
for best uh, short subject. Um, so in terms of his origin, Pluto first appeared as a nameless dog uh, tracking the escaped Mickey Mouse in the cartoon The Chain Gang on August, or August 6, 1930. On August 23, 1930, The Picnic was released, which was Pluto's, which Pluto was Minnie's dog in that uh, cartoon, but he was given the name Rover. In May of 19, May 3rd, 1931, The Moose Hunt was released, where Pluto was given his name as Mickey's dog. Pluto would be a supporting character until 1934, where he would star in his very first own cartoon, Playful Pluto. Uh, Pluto would also be featured in other Disney projects, including Mickey Mouse Works, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, and Disney's House of Mouse. He would also appear in theatrical features, including Who Framed Roger Rabbit, The Prince and the Pauper, and Runaway Brain, and then in the music video series Totally Mini. Uh, Pluto appears in several Disney video games as well. He appears in Mickey Mania, Disney Golf, and Kingdom Hearts. Uh, Pluto is available for autographs and photos in the Disney parks. Uh, he's often seen in the Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World at the front entrance. And in Epcot, he often makes his appearance in the front entrance as well. Uh, Pluto remains consistent and often appears with Mickey and the gang in shows in the Disney parks. Uh, there are thousands of merchandise featuring Mickey's lovable dog and will definitely be part of the future of Disney. Uh, so I think Pluto's unique because he's the only character in the Fab Five that doesn't talk. Um, and he's consistently there, though, and he's proved to be one of the popular. Some of the cute video YouTube videos, if you ever get to see him, is um, there's often videos with Pluto uh, interacting with service animals. I think these are wonderful, um, kind of very cute, adorable videos featuring Pluto. So... So thank you so much for joining us here on Disney Movie Investigation. Uh, if any of you have seen the movie Benji the Hunted, I would love for you to please leave a comment below on what you think. Uh, maybe I'm being too harsh, but I don't know. But I um, would love to hear what you guys think. As well as if you guys have a favorite memory of Pluto, I would love for you guys to share it. So as we look forward to our next episode, we're going to be starting a new film series as we take a look at the first Planet of the Apes starring Charlton Heston. So until next time, I hope you have a magical day and we will see you real soon.